Hello students, welcome back to our channel. Today we are going to cover the biological control of weeds or biological weed control. So the name itself suggests that you can find uh, you know, from the name itself. This is biological weed control means here we are using biological agent to control the weeds. What is biological agents? That means which are living organisms. Here we use the living organisms, different living or organisms to control the weeds. So basically we are not controlling the weeds here. We are managing the weeds. We are managing the weeds to present below the threshold level. That means suppose there is a crop and there is weed. Okay. Up to a certain level we can allow the weed to grow here. Okay. Suppose in our home, if uh, some guests are coming, up to certain level we can serve them. If uh, the number of guests it will rise from, like if there there are three to five guests in our home, we can easily manage them. If there are fifty guests in our home, if if there are hundred guests in our home, how ca how can we manage them? Our resource will be exhausted. Yes or no? So in that way, in our field also, suppose there are two to three number of weeds are present. Surrounding the crop plant, so it uh, the crop can manage to draw the nutrient. It can manage to you uh, know get the resources. But if there are numerous weeds, like fifty hundred weeds, so it will severely affect the crop plant, right? So in biological weed control, what we are doing, you are we are releasing certain bio agents, certain living organisms that control these weeds below their threshold level. Okay, it will not completely eradicate the weeds. Okay. Uh, and it will remain the weeds below its threshold level. So using other organism. Uh, so what are those organism? It may be any parasite. It may be any predator like insect, mites. It may be any pathogen like fungi, bacteria, virus. It may be any deleterious rhizobacteria. It may be herbivorous fish. It may be other animals like dog, geese, tail. Or it may be any botanical agent right? like competitive plant or crop or weed. Okay. <coughs> So in different situation, we have to uh, use different uh, organism to control this weed in biological weed control measure. So what are the advantages of this biological weed control? It is obviously eco-friendly. Suppose we are in another case, we are using the uh, power, suppose fossil fuel to control the weeds, to run the uh, machinery or tillage implement to control the weeds. So there we are uh, polluting the environment. Again, if we are using herbicide, we are also polluting the environment. That is an agrochemical, that is a synthetic product. So we are uh, increasing the pollution. But here in biological weed control, we are releasing the certain bio agents. So that is not uh, polluting the environment, that is not contaminating the environment. Okay. So it is basically eco friendly. It is economical in terms of in long run. But it is not economical in short run. If in short run we want economy, then we can go for herbicide application. But in long run, it is very economical. Then it is self perpetuating. Suppose once you release certain bioagent, suppose once you release certain insect to control the weeds, so insect can reproduce itself, right? So uh, as they can reproduce itself, so it can be self perpetuating. We need not to apply those bioagent again and again. Okay. Then it is preserving the biodiversity as we are releasing insects, so it is not harming the biodiversity. Then it is effective to control weeds in area that is inaccessible to man. Suppose in a forest area, we need to control certain weeds, okay? Or if any area we are not as uh, capable to assess that particular area, we can release certain bioagent. They can easily go to that area and they can easily control that area, right? Or control weeds in that area. <laughs> So these are certain advantages of biological weed control. What are the limitation or disadvantages of biological weed control? High initial cost to in uh, to incorporate or to find out that insect, to uh, multiply that insect, then to release that insect, there is some cost involved. So that is high, very high. So that initial cost is very high in case of biological weed control. Then it some biological weed control uh, that means some bioagents they may affect the economic crop also. Okay, suppose we are releasing certain bio uh, control agent or maybe some insect to control certain weed. Okay, it is basically affecting that weed and if it is basically predating that weed particular weed. But what is the guarantee that uh, that insect that um, that will not affect the crop plant as well? So for that we need to test. We need to do starvation test. That means 
we need to test that uh, that if that weed is not present in that particular area it is not affecting any other crop right so that is basically what starvation test means so how long it can survive how long it can uh, it, it is capable enough to you know wait for the weed to come and i will attack that weed if the weed is not present then i will not attack any other crop that is the star starvation test then it is having limited use because uh, it it will only control one single weed it cannot uh, it is weed specific it cannot like broad spectrum herbicide when we are applying it may control broadleaf as well as uh, grass weeds as well as sages but in case of biological weed control it is not broad spectrum then it is very slow in action in herbicide case we just applied the herbicide after one or two days or after one week or two week we can find the weeds it is gone it is killed but in biological weed control it is very slow eradication is not possible in case of biological weed control because once we are releasing certain insect once the weed suppose weed population gone down so from where this insect will get food so their population so their population initially their population will go up then again when the the weed is exhausted or weed is controlled then their population will also go down if their population will also go down then weed population again will go up so like that there will be a balance but eradication is not possible then warranting pesticide use okay then environmental constraints some environment in some environment uh, biocontrol agent can cannot survive so there is environmental con constraint then weed flora shift if some um, uh, some uh, weeds we are controlling by biological weed control then another weed may come come up like right so weed flora shift will be there then small or narrow span of activity suppose insect they are they are living for some period okay their longevity is very less so uh, so span of activity is very less then conflict of interest over target weed okay there are certain conflict of interest uh, for introduction of the bio herbicide right so these are these are certain disadvantages or limitation of application of bio uh, biological control of weeds then certain approaches of biological weed control there are two approaches of biological weed control one is classical approach or inoculative approach another is augmentative or inundative or bio herbicidal approach these are two approaches of weed control or biological weed control first let's discuss the classical approach of bio, bio, biological weed control classical approach of biological weed control so it invo involves some specific or non specific bioagent like insect fungi nematode fish etc uh, to manage the weed population below threshold level right so basically what we are using here we are using certain specific or non specific bio bioagent that means some bioagents they are specific to some controlling some weeds some non specific bioagent suppose uh, let's say fish so it will it will control the weeds irrespective of what species from what species it is right so some are specific uh, bio biological weed control agents and some are non specific bio, biological weed control agent so mainly these are adopted in non crop situation to control the exotic or introduced weed why we cannot control the uh, natural weed or the uh, the indigenous weed which are already present were already existed in existing in our uh, in our country because already natural enemy present for that those weeds but which are introduced no natural enemy we are we are finding here okay so uh, on uh, which weed which are having the natural uh, natural uh, enemy uh, they are already adapted to that situation okay but those weed, weeds which are introduced we have to bring the natural weed from other country and that will control that weed okay that is not adapted to that situation right then uh, initially so, some small portion should be uh, released some small small natural enemy should be released in the place then that will multiply again right so some examples of uh, insect that that is capable to control some weeds right like opuntia species it is controlled by uh, cochineal insect that is called dactylopius indicus or by cactus moth that is cactoblast cactoblastis cactorum so opuntia it is controlled by uh, the dactylopius indicus as well as cactoblastis cactorum these are insects then parthenium hystrophorus that is one major weed 
that is controlled by either Zygogramma bicolorata or by Epiblema strunwana. Then Lantana camera, that is another major weed that is controlled by uh, the uh, Crocidosima lantana or Agromyza lantana. Acornia crassipes, that is water hyacinth, that, is, that can be controlled by Neochetina acornia, Neochetina bruci. Then Dodor or Coscuta, that is one parasitic weed that can be controlled by Melan agromyza coscuta, then Smicronis coscuta. Salvinia molesta, another aquatic weed that can be controlled by Paulinia acuminata or Crypto Citrobagus salvinia. Then Alternanthera phylogeroid, that, that is also called alligator weed that can be controlled by Flea beetle, that is Agaside hygrophylla. Cypress rotundus, uh, the purple knot says that is that can be controlled by moth borer that is called Bactra verutana. Luruja species that you can find in rice field that can be controlled by steel blue beetle that is Haltica sania. So this is the classical uh, biological control. Then bio herbicidal approach. Here what what we we can do here we are using different microorganisms like fungi. Mostly uh, mostly we use fungi. So we just uh, in uh, we just we just use the spores of this fungi and uh, we use it as we apply herbicide okay in case of insect what we use what we we do we just release the insect and they are self perpetuating but in case of bio herbicidal approach we are uh, cultivating or we are multiplying the spores of the fungus and any carrier media mixing it in uh, in or incubating it in any carrier mm, carrier we are just applying the uh, this fungi or myco herbicide or bio herbicide uh, on the crop foliage like we apply the herbicide right so basically here we use the pathogen inoculum cultured in artificial media and we are just applying it as herbicide as we apply herbicide so we have to again and again apply it as we are applying the herbicide again and again year after another so we have to apply this uh, myco herbicide also again and again so characteristics of bio herbicide this is living entities inoculum having plant pathogen or most specifically fungi it is capable of in vitro culturing uh, in artificial media and mass production applied directly in the target weed to kill the or reduce the weed growth then commercial it is formulated and spread like herbicide over the crop canopy so what are the advantages of bio herbicide it is having high degree of specificity and greater safety in case of uh, the classical bioagent or when we release certain insect to control that may have uh, non-specificity but uh, the bioherbicide it is having higher specificity and it is eco-friendly and no residue buildup no health hazard in human no development of uh, herbicide resistant weed then it is highly effective to control invasive parasitic or perennial weeds these are certain advantages then what are the limitations of bioherbicidal approach Large numbers of bioherbicide or microherbicide required to control a composite root flora. Suppose if one single weed is present, so we know suppose this fungi can is capable to uh, infest that particular weed. So we can use that bioherbicide in that case. But in our crop field, there is no single weed is present. There is a composite root flora. That means mixed root flora is present. So we have to control several bioherbicide. So that is one tedious process or that is uh, not uh, you know possible, right? Then it is having slow process of weed suppressing or killing. Then herbicide, it is very slower. Then if there is th thermal sensitivity, so in summer season or in suppose winter, that pathogen, the spores may remain dormant or there may be problem of, of infestation. So optimum environment is required. Then storage life is very less according uh, with respect to herbicide. Then high production cost is involved because laboratory facilities needed. Then bioherbicide need reg uh, registration with environment protection agency. Suppose whatever bioagent or bioherbicide we are using, we need to approve that uh, particular thing from the environment protection agency. There are different pro environment protection agencies are there. We need to we need their prior approval before using these products. For example, example of this bioherbicide, Divine is one bioherbicide that is from. Uh, extracted from Phytophthora palmimbora, this is fungal spore, and uh, this control uh, weed strangler vine that is Morenia odorata in citrus orchard. Then Collego that is Colletotrichum gliosporoid, and uh, it causes leaf blight in weed, and that can control joint veg or estinomin species in rice field. Then Bipolaris another bioherbicide, 
that is the uh, suspension of fungal spore of bipolar is sorghicola that can control Johnson grass or sorghum halepens. Then biolophos, this is microbial toxin produced from Streptomyces hygroscopicus. This is non-specific and it can be applied in general vegetation uh, to control the weeds. Then cast, this is another bioherbicide from Alternanthria cassi and it can cause blight disease and it, it control cassia species in cotton, groundnut and soybean. So this was about biological uh, weed control. So if you are facing any doubt on understanding any point, you can uh, let me know in the comment section. See you in the next lecture. Till then, bye-bye.